program, we explored the life and physical history of the land between two rivers. Five billion years fill the void of four distinct geological eras. What we now call Iowa was molded by volcanoes and oceans. Glaciers followed, and the Des Moines River was formed. As the glaciers receded, man emerged. First as a hunter, then a farmer, he left his mark. Today, archaeologists search for the ancient signs of man along the banks of the Des Moines River. Life abounds here, as it does near Lake Red Rock, a man-made extension of the Des Moines River. Birds like the American bald eagle, the eastern bluebird, the woodcock, and the blue heron make it their temporary home. Today, more on the Des Moines River. good stuff. The Des Moines has seen its share of changes, yet life still abounds in this valley. Delving once again into an Iowa long past, we see that it has always been so. As the Des Moines River flows in its southeasterly course across, across south central Iowa, we find exposed along the sides of its valley um, rocks of Pennsylvanian age, and these rock units cover a large part of the south central part of the state, and they're the rocks in which Iowa's coal deposits are found. This is a fascinating fossil impression of the bark of a tree that lived during Pennsylvanian time in a coastal or tidal area in which there was a large amount of vegetation accumulating in low swampy environments environments which later gave us the coal deposits that we have in our state. This is the bark of a scale tree, a, a tree that geologists refer to as a lepidodendron, one of the more common uh, Pennsylvanian flat plant fossils. And one exposed here was just a uh, beautiful preservation. You can see very clearly the scale-like pattern um, of the bark of this particular tree specimen. Geologists have reconstructed the environments that probably contributed to these plant fossils and in looking at dioramas that have been made of what the Pennsylvanian coal swamps look like, we'll notice that they had an almost tropical appearance to them. Very uh, large, um, ornate trees, uh, just, just very tropical in their appearance. and. Keep in mind that during Pennsylvanian time, some 250 million years ago, the North American continent and Iowa were not in their present positions on the Earth's surface. Today, for example, we're about 40 degrees north latitude, but during the period of time that the vegetation, the trees grew from which these fossils were made, uh, Iowa was much closer to the equator. There is further evidence of Iowa's tropical past. Once, this land was covered by shallow seas and was home to a wide variety of creatures, some now extinct. Now, as you look closely at these fossils, you'll see that they're, they are very different from the plant fossils that we were looking at just over the ridge from here. And these fossils are Mississippian in age. Some of these even resemble the seashell, clam-like uh, shells and gastropods or snail-like shells that you might find along the seashore today. So these are clearly marine. Referring to these fossils as the palafauna indicates that there's a wide variety of materials here, and that's certainly the case. For example, this is a, a fine little uh, horn coral, a solitary coral, one of the uh, individual fossils that's found here in the strip mine area. A very nice brachiopod. Uh, there are numerous brachiopod examples here. This is a type known as a spirifer. It has kind of a wing prong coming off the sides of the shell. And then lastly, a little fossil that we refer to as a bryozoan, a little branching form here. It's really quite remarkable to find such a diversity of fossil forms and it's really even more exciting to come to a place like this 
and to realize that each rock that you break open and each fossil that you look at is something that no one else has ever seen before and that you're getting your first look at something that was alive perhaps 200 or 300 million years ago. Gene Pryor mentioned how 250 million years of time processed ancient swamp life into coal that modern Iowans use to produce energy. There are other products of Iowa's geologic past serving the needs of the present. Shale, strip mined near a tumble. In this setting, we're standing in the midst of a strip mine, a mining of shales that are being utilized in the manufacture of brick and tile. And Ottumwa is one of the major centers in Iowa for brick and tile manufacture. It's also interesting to realize that though we're using these materials today, the fact that the shales are here in such abundance dates from um, the Pennsylvanian period of geologic time, a time when the site where we're standing now was actually a subtropical to tropical sea or shallow marine environment where we had uh, a near coastal environment, quiet water where the very fine particles of clay could settle out and those fine particles accumulated in, in great thicknesses and were eventually converted to the shale deposits that we see here today. Sand is one of Iowa's naturally occurring resources that we find principally associated with the state's river valleys. The Des Moines River Valley here in the background shows us that resource very clearly. Not only is the floodplain area shared with agricultural crops such as this cornfield in the foreground, but in the distance we see the workings of a sand and gravel operation. This is an area near Ottumwa. The sand that is being taken from this sand pit was laid down thousands of years ago as the river uh, flowed past this area, probably carrying a lot more water and, and sand material than it does today. These sand deposits were probably first carried uh, by the glacier in the, in the northern part of the state. Yeah.